Uh, today we'll see how to do the analysis for three-dimensional finite element problems. And for three-dimensional problems, the deformation will take that to a vector given by uh, three elements, u, v, and w, where u, v, and w are the deformations in the x, y, and z direction respectively. The strain vector will be given by this uh, vector: epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon z, lambda y z, lambda x z, lambda x y. Okay, and epsilon x is nothing but del u by del x, epsilon y will be del v by del y, epsilon z will be del w by del z, and for lambda yz will del v by del z plus del w by del y. This will be lambda yz and so on. Okay, and sigma which are the stresses, they will be given by again a six tuple vector, so that will be sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, uh, tau y z, tau x z and tau x y transpose of that okay. and this will be equal to d times epsilon. Okay, The same uh, notation as we had for two dimensional uh, problems. And the body force vector that is f will represent that as fx, fy, fz, okay. fx, fy and fz are the body forces in the x, y and z direction respectively and the attractive forces will be again tx, ty and tz, there are three forces in the uh, x, y and z direction respectively. Okay, and they are basically a pressure forces which will be acting on the surface of the body. And the simplest element that we will take will be a four nodded element, a four nodded tetrahedral element which will look something like this. Okay, so it is a four nodded element 1, 2, 3 and 4 and a deformation in the three directions at each node, let us say node 1 are q1, q2 and q3 where these are the x, y and z directions. Okay, similarly, at each node, we have three deformations. Node 2 will have q4, q5, q6. 3 will have q7, q8, q9 and 4 will have q10, q11, q12. So, the deformation vector q, that will be given by 12 elements which will be q1, q2, q3, so on till q12. <coughs> this will be a deformation vector okay and if we have a a body with some boundary conditions which has a total of let us say n nodes then uh, the deformation vector, the global deformation vector will have 3 n elements which will be q1, q2, q3, so on till q3n. Okay, so there will be 3 n elements, so the total amount of degrees of freedom will be 3 n. We have 3 n degrees of freedom. Okay, and if we model the deformations using shape functions for this element corresponding to the four nodes, we will take four different shape functions corresponding to one, we will take a shape function n1, for, n, for node 2 we will take n2, for node 3 n3 and so on. Okay, so, we will have four shape functions n1, n2, n3 and n4. And to start with, we will assume let us say n1 is a parameter, let us say zeta, n2 is a parameter eta, n3 is psi, and n4 will be 1 minus each of these, 1 minus zeta minus eta minus psi. This is where n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 has to be equal to 1 at all points, okay, and n1 will be 1 at node 1, will be 0 at the other 3 nodes, similarly the other 3. Okay, this is just an extension of the 
two dimensional uh, elements that we had uh, just extending that to three dimensions okay and then we'll say u will be equal to n1 q1 plus n2 q4 plus n3 q7 plus n4 q10 u which is a deformation in the x direction <coughs> the deformation in the x direction for node 1 is q1 for node 2 is q4 for node 3 will be q7 and for node 4 will be q10 okay so if u will be given by this equation and v will be given by n1 q2 plus n2 q5 <coughs> plus n3 q8 plus and 4q11 and w will be this okay and if we write this in a matrix form we'll say u is equal to n times q where the matrix n will be n1 0 0 n2 0 0 n3 0 0 n4 0 0 0 n1 0 0 n2 0 0 n3 0 and 0 n4 0 and 0 0 n1 0 0 n2 0 0 n3 0 0 n4 Okay, this matrix will be the matrix n and u will be equal to n times q okay and again if we assume an isoparametric representation we will be saying x will be equal to n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 plus n4 x4 okay and y will be equal to n1 y1 plus n2 y2 plus n3 y3 plus n4, n4 y4 and so on similarly for z and this is assuming an isoparametric representation okay And in these relationships, if we substitute our expressions for z n1, n2, n3, and n4 in terms of zeta and eta, these expressions, okay, this uh, this set of equations would become x will be equal to zeta x1 plus eta x2 plus xi x3 plus 1 minus zeta minus eta minus xi into x4 okay and this I can say will be zeta into x14 plus eta into x24 plus xi into x34 plus x4 okay this is again very similar to what we did in the two dimensional case Okay, similarly y will be equal to zeta into y14 plus eta into y24 plus xi into y34 plus y4 and z will be zeta into z14 plus eta into z24 plus xi into z34 plus z4 ok so this, these are the relationships for x, y and z and if we do the same thing here for u, v and w we will get u will be equal to n1 will be replaced by zeta so we will get zeta q1 minus q10 will get so it will be q110 ok plus eta 
into Q410 plus xi into Q710 plus Q10 and so on. Okay, there will be an expression in terms of zeta, eta and xi. Okay. And now, in order to get, uh, we need to get del u by del x, del u by del y and del u by del z. Okay. We will relate these to del u by del zeta, del v by del zeta, sorry, del u by del eta and del u by del xi. Okay. And the relationship would be that this vector, we write it again, del u by del zeta, del u by del eta and del u by del xi, this will be equal to del x by del zeta, del y by del zeta, del z by del zeta, so del x by del eta. and del x by del xi, del y by del xi and del z by del xi multiplied by del u by del x, del u by del y okay this first term will be equal to this row multiplied by this column okay so del u by del zeta will be del x by del zeta Now, del x by del zeta, just a sec. Yeah, so del u by del zeta will be del x by del zeta into del u by del x, del y by del zeta into del, del u by del y plus del z by del zeta into del u by del z. That will be del u by del zeta. And similarly, del u by del eta and del u by del xi. Okay, and this expression is again the Jacobian. Okay, and del x by del zeta, each of these terms we can evaluate from these expressions. Del x by del zeta is nothing but x14, and del x by del eta is nothing but x24, and so on. Okay, so this Jacobian okay this Jacobian will get that this would be equal to del x by del zeta is x14 del, del y by del zeta will be y14 this will be z14 and here we will get x24 we will get y24 and z24 this will be x34 y34 and z34 ok so the Jacobian will be this and you should remember in the two dimensional case we had said that the determinant of the Jacobian there was equal to two times the area in this case instead of two times the area we will get six times the volume of the element ok and again then we can prove it mathematically the determinant of this Jacobian is six times the volume of the element. Okay, so again we'll use this relationship for finding out the uh, relationship between epsilon and uh, Q. Okay, so now in this we know the Jacobian, we know these terms, so we can find each of these terms. Okay, once we get each of these terms, we'll get similarly we can get expressions for del v by del x del v by del y and del v by del z and so on ok so we can get all these terms and we can com compile the terms for epsilon ok epsilon is nothing but del u by del x for epsilon x del v by del y for epsilon y and so on 
Okay, we can compile it just like we did in the two dimensional case and get the relationship for epsilon which is equal to b times q. Okay, where b will contain elements which have been obtained from this matrix and this matrix. We will take the inverse of the Jacobian, put it on this side and so on. Okay, so the B matrix will be a slightly complicated expression, but it will have expressions only of x14, y14, z14, x24, y24, z24 and so on. And from this side, we get expression of q12, q17 and For the Jacobian, these terms will contain terms of x14, y14, z14. Here will contain terms of x24, y24, and z24. This is x34, y34, and z34. The terms here, del u by del zeta, will be q110. This is q710, and this is uh, sorry, this is q410, and this is q710. So basically, expression for this will have a term only of x, y, and q. It, it won't have any expression of zeta, zeta, eta, or eta. Okay, so when we find this B matrix, this will be independent of zeta, eta, and q, zeta, eta, and xi. Okay, so again, the strain within an element will be a constant in this case. Okay, and quickly, if we see how to find out the strain energy. <coughs> We know the strain energy is half of the volume integral of sigma transpose epsilon dv. Okay. This will be half of the volume integral sigma. Sigma is equal to dbq. The so sigma transpose will give us q transpose, b transpose, d. D and d is a symmetric matrix, so d and d transpose are the same. Okay. Epsilon is BQ, we will say B times Q multiplied by DV. Okay, and again, if you look at this, Q transpose is a constant, B is a constant, all these terms are constants. Okay, so the integral of this will be equal to half of Q transpose into the volume of the element multiplied by B transpose D B times Q. And again, this will be equal to half of Q transpose KEQ. The KE is the element stiffness matrix. Again, KE is a 12 by 12 matrix now. Because each element has got 12 degrees of freedom. <coughs> okay. And similarly, if you consider the force terms, the potential energy contribution due to the body forces will get that to be integral over the element of u transpose f dv u is equal to nq so this will be equal to integral of q transpose n transpose into f dv okay q transpose and f are going to be constants but n is going to uh, vary with zeta and eta so we'll get this to be Q transpose into integral of N transpose dV <coughs> multiplied by F. And if we carry out this integral, we can finally show that this will be equal to Q transpose into volume of the element by 4 multiplied by Fx, Fy, Fz, Fx, Fy, Fz and so on. There are 12 terms of this type, transpose of that. So effectively what that means is, if you have a four-noded element like this, which has some body force acting in, in, a, in any arbitrary direction, the contribution of this can be split equally into the four nodes. Okay, so Where let's say this is f by 4, f by 4, f by 4, f by 4. Where this f is a total body force acting on this element. 
okay, that we can see from here that V e into F x is a total body force acting divided by four is what is acting in the first degree of freedom. V e into F y is a total body force acting in the y direction divided by four is what is acting on the first degree, second degree of freedom, and so on. Okay, and this expression again we'll write that as Q transpose into the element body force vector. Okay, similarly for tractive forces, we can show that integral of U transpose T D A will be equal to Q transpose multiplied by T E. Okay, the T E will be the contribution on each of the nodes. If you have a four noded element like this, and we have tractive forces acting on one of the faces. Okay, let's say on this face, face two, three, four, there's some pressure acting. Then the total tractive force will split that equal into three components acting on these three nodes, and we'll get this T E expression. Okay, and then again, if we com combine the potential energy for the complete uh, body. Which will be, we will get global equations of the type Q transpose KQ minus Q transpose F. Okay, because these are the element vectors, element tractive force vector. This is the element body force vector, and this is the element stiffness matrix. Okay, this is the element displacement vector. If you find a total U in the total strain energy in the body, that will be sigma U E, which will be sigma of half of Q transpose K E Q, which is equal to half of Q transpose K Q. Okay, and again the process of finding out the global stiffness matrix will remain the same. Okay, the only difference will be that now we'll have the total number of degrees of freedom will be 3 n, where n is the number of nodes, so total number of degrees of freedom will be 3 times that. Okay, And this uh, vector q will also have 3 n elements, f will also have 3 n elements. Okay, We will get this equation, again the method of solving it will also remain the same. Okay, that means whatever the boundary conditions be, we will use the either the penalty approach or the method of elimination. Okay, So, this is how we can solve for uh, three dimensional problems okay, using a simple four noted uh, tetrahedral element. Okay, any question on this? Okay, uh, and today we will do one more thing that when you are talking of a three dimensional body Okay, let us take any arbitrary, any uh, three dimensional body. Okay, let us take an uh, arbitrary shape and let us say it is got some boundary conditions and we want to split this body into a set of four noded elements. Okay, then for each of the nodes, we will have to give the coordinates that are there. We will have to find out the coordinates for each of the node. And for a general three dimensional uh, body, this can become a very complex task. Okay, for instance, if we talk of, let's say, you have a simple connect, a simple rod, okay, or if we talk of a connecting rod, we, and we want to split this into a set of three-dimensional elements. Okay, and we want to get the coordinates of each of the nodes. It's not a very easy task. So typically, what we what we do is we can split this into a set of cubes. Okay, and if you have a cube, we'll split this cube into a set of tetrahedrons. Okay, so first this body will be split into a set of small cubes. Okay, uh, the size of the cube will depend on how fine a mesh we wanted to we want to have. Okay, so if you take a, a set of small cubes in this, 
for those cubes let's say if you have a cube like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is a 8 noded cube okay and if you want to use tetrahedral elements we will split this 8 noded cube into tetrahedrons okay and the way we can split a cube into tetrahedrons Consider this cube. Okay, it's got eight nodes: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can split this into four uh, into five tetrahedrons. The first one is one, two, four, five. So one, two, four, and five. Okay, so this in this corner we will get one tetrahedron. Okay, similarly 2, 3, 7, 4. 2, 3, 7 in this is 4. So this is one edge and 4 and 7 are connected like this. Okay, so 2, 3, 7, 4. That is with 3 as a corner we will get one slice. Okay, we will cut the corner off that will give us another tetrahedron. 4, 5, 7, 8. Consider 4, 5, 7 and 8. So if you join 5 and 7. Okay, so 4, 5, 7 and 8. That is with 8 as a corner, we will get the third tetrahedron. And 2, 5, 6, 7. That means with 6 as a corner, we will get another tetrahedron which will be 2, 5, 7 and 6. Okay, so with 4 corners, that is 1, 3 and 6 and 8 will get one tetrahedron each okay so there are four tetrahedrons and the volume that is enclosed inside that is two four five and seven okay just imagine this cube four of its corners have been cut off the remaining volume will consist of nodes two four five and seven that will be the fourth tetrahedron Okay, so this way we'll, we can split this cube into a set of five tetrahedrons. Okay, and if we consider this uh, cube having, let's say, total volume of V, and if we consider first element one, two, four, five, that is one, two, four, and five. Its base triangle is half the base of the cube. Height is the same. So, what will be the volume of this tetrahedron? The volume of this tetrahedron, volume of element one, base area into height into one third. Okay, so one by three into area of the base into height. Okay, so this will give us the total volume by six. Okay, so the volume of this tetrahedron would be one sixth of the total volume of the cube. Okay, similarly, the second ele uh, the second element that is two, three, seven, four, two, three, seven, and four. That will also have a volume of v by six. Okay, so this has a volume of v by six. This will have a volume of v by six. Four, five, seven, eight. That is also symmetrical because it is about the node 8. So this will also have a volume of V by 6 and this will also have a volume of V by 6. Okay, so the tetrahedron which is left in the center will be a have will have a volume of V by 3. Then the total volume V minus each of these volumes. Okay, so we will get the uh, central tetrahedron with a volume of V by 3. That means that uh, tetrahedron will be twice the size of the of any of the other tetrahedrons. Okay. So in this case, we are getting five tetrahedrons, four of which have identical volume, but the fifth one is having twice the volume. 
Is that okay? So if there is another way of splitting this cube into tetrahedrons, we will split it into six tetrahedrons of equal volume. 